Hello everyone, this is Anup Nair and I welcome you all to my channel Anup Nair Tutorials. So today we are going to discuss about the virtual environment in Python and we will also discuss about the advantages and how to install it in your system and how you can use it. So let's move on to the next slide. So first of all, what is a virtual environment? A virtual environment is a directory which holds an independent Python installation and the dependencies. So basically, a virtual environment allows you to have multiple installations of Python as well as you can also install dependencies which do not affect each other. So we will learn more about this in the next slides. I'll just move on to the next point which is you can create multiple virtual environments for different projects. So yes, as I mentioned earlier, using virtual environments, you get the possibilities to have multiple environments for your multiple projects. Suppose you want to work on say five different projects at the same time, it really happens when you are a freelancer. So uh, if all of your projects are in Python and if the different clients needs you to work on different versions of Python or different versions of the dependencies, then it might be a problem for you. So there comes the virtual environment for your rescue. You just need to install virtual environments on your system for each project and then you can install the dependencies for those projects as well and they do not conflict with each other. So that's the most important benefit that you get using virtual environment. The next point is creating a virtual environment is just a one minute task which could save you a lot of time later. Yeah. So what happens is most of the people who are new to the programming or even I have seen experienced people who just do not want to waste their time setting up virtual environment which just takes one minute but even then they just go ahead and create a new project right and then they spend time there and then later on they, they find it out that one dependency is clashing with the other dependency or so many problems arises right so the best approach that I would suggest you is to create a virtual environment first and only then start with your project. Okay, so we move on to the next slide. So the next slide says, uh, it actually shows you the representation of a virtual environment. So here you can see, uh, we want to have three different projects in our machine. So I have named it as project one, project two and project three. And each of these projects have different requirements of the Python version. So for project one, I need Python 2.7. For project two, I need Python 3.6. And for the project three, I need Python 3.7. So my approach would be I create three different virtual environments and each virtual environment will have different Python versions installed in it, right? If we do not use a virtual environment, then it's really tough to maintain these three different projects in the same machine. And also, if you look at these orange uh, bars here, it shows the dependencies. So for virtual environment one or the project one, I need the dependency one. It could be any package and another dependency is dependency 2.0. And in virtual environment two, that is for project two, I need another dependency which is dependency 3 and the second dependency for this particular project is dependency 2.2 .2. so if you notice we use the same dependency in project 1 and in project 2 but the only difference is the version number so using virtual environment you get the possibility to have the same module but with different versions installed on your system that makes it really easy for you to develop different projects which has different dependency requirements, right? So similarly, project three uses virtual environment three and it has a completely different set of dependencies. And all of these virtual environments reside on top of your operating system. So for example, if you're using a Mac OS or um, Linux or a Windows operating system, then all these virtual environments are installed on top of those. So uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, we will discuss how to create a virtual environment here. So the step is to first visit this URL. You don't need to, but I'm visiting this URL just to give you an idea how it looks like. 
So this is the official page for the virtual environment where it shows you the latest version of the virtual environment that you can use and uh, this is the pip uh, command to install the virtual environment into your system. So I'll just copy this command, open my PowerShell here, I'll paste it and as you know the pip install how, how it works so when I do a pip install and the package name it should install into my the system the, so this virtual environment package will be available throughout my system right so if I press enter it will install the virtual environment for me on my system and I will close this tab move to the next tab so now we have virtual environment in our system but we need to create a new instance of the virtual environment for my new project right so the next step is to run this command which is virtual env space the environment name so we will see how it looks like so you can see uh, i already had virtual environment in my system so it just asked me to uh, upgrade the pip version that's all so so the next step we are going to do is install oh sorry we have already installed so we are going to create a new instance of the virtual environment here so if you see i just do this command which is virtual env then space then my environment name so i name my environment as env here i press enter so you see some information from my command prompt it says using the base prefix python 3.6 so in my system i have already installed python 3.6 and it's going to use that version of the python as the default version um, so yes meanwhile it gets installed we will move on to the next point okay so the next point is once you have a new instance of the virtual environment the next step is obviously to activate it right so to activate a virtual environment you need to execute this particular command yeah so what does this command says here so this is yeah so we are back to our command prompt and we can see that a new python executable is installed into my virtual environment which is env now i can just do a ls to see the list of directories inside my current directory and you can see that env is created right now i will also go inside the env folder and list you can see that there are these folders again and i am more interested inside this scripts folder so i will show you what's there inside so i'll go to cd scripts and ls so you see a lot of files and you can also see that python.exe is there as well as there is one uh, file which says activate so we need to uh, run this file which is the activate file in order to activate our virtual environment so i'll just go back to my original folder which was this one i'll clear my screen and i will paste I'm sorry, I will paste the command which I copied from the uh, presentation. And here I need to replace this with my actual environment name, which was env. So, what we are doing here is we are trying to execute the activate script for within which is currently residing inside this virtual environment path. And when I execute this, it should activate my virtual environment in a while uh, we will wait for it and yes you can see that uh, the virtual environment is activated so how do you know that so if you look at this particular line you can see that env is prepended and which actually tells me that I'm inside the virtual environment now okay so i have a new virtual environment which is activated and now i can install any dependencies for example django numpy or whatever which i want to install using pip right and these installations will not be conflicting with other installations which are present in my system 
Okay, so I will move on to the next slide which says uh, the different benefits of having a virtual environment, right? So the most important and yes, yeah, the most important benefit which I would say is you can have independent Python installations in your system. So you can have a Python installation of uh, Python 2.7, 3.6, 3.7 and so on within a single system, right? And the second most important, inform, uh, uh, most important benefit that you get is install packages required for the project using PIP. So for example, you can just do PIP install Django. So I'll show you here, P install Django. So I'm within my virtual environment and if I execute this command, it will install Django only for this particular virtual environment. So you can see that it has started downloading Django and it will get installed soon. And the third most important stuff here is it does not impact other projects and dependencies on your system. So as we have already discussed, each virtual environment are independent of one another and hence it does not affect what is installed in a different virtual environment. So you can easily work on multiple projects at the same time without getting impacted. I mean, one project will never impact another project if you use virtual environment. Okay, so and the last but I think is really a good feature of virtual environment is it is supported by almost all the IDEs and it helps in quick development. So I use PyCharm for developing my projects in Python and Django and PyCharm has really, really a great support for virtual environment. You can, um, you can just link your PyCharm to the virtual environment you need to work with and it also identifies what, are, what all uh, dependencies are already installed and what all dependencies are missing and it will notify you. You can install them by, by just clicking the notification and so on. So it has really great support uh, from different IDEs. Okay, so we move on to the next slide, which is additional information on virtual environment. So we have already created a virtual environment. We have already activated it and now comes the deactivation process. So if you want to ever deactivate your virtual environment, then you just execute this command, which is deactivate. So when you execute the deactivate command, you see that the ENV is removed from my next prompt which means that my virtual environment has been deactivated okay so the next step is to delete a virtual environment so suppose you have already done your project work and everything is done now you need to clean up your system and you need to remove the virtual environment from your system in that case you just run the rm minus r space virtual environment name or you can also just go to your directory right click and delete or just like you uh, you delete a file or a folder from your windows machine or mac so we will just try to remove the virtual environment we just created so rm minus r env so env is the name of the virtual environment we created um, a few minutes back so if i press enter it should delete my virtual environment and if i do a ls now you see that there is nothing there so we we are sure now that our virtual environment has been deleted along with all the contents of that folder okay so the next step is to create a virtual environment with specific python version so earlier when we created a virtual environment it took the default python version which was installed in my system but now we want to specify the python version which should be installed while creating a virtual environment okay so we can just copy this command from here And then I will tell you what does it do and how does this work. Okay, so the command remains the same, which is virtual env, and here you see an option hyphen p followed by the path where your Python executable is present. 
followed by the environment name so we keep the environment name same as before which is env and this is the actual path of the python exe in my system so um, i think this is correct and if i just press enter uh, then it starts creating a virtual environment with the python version which i specified there so you can see it here using base prefix e drive python 36 and it has now started creating a virtual environment with this right so this is what we had in this slide i'll move on to the next one and that's all so now you know what a python a python uh, virtual environment is how to create it what are the benefits and how does it help you in your day-to-day -day project development right so if you have any questions just type it in the comment section and i'll try to answer all your questions as soon as possible so thanks for watching this video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified whenever i create a video next time on python django and all other related stuff thanks for your time see you bye